Good day, one and all. Welcome back to the Grey Matter Let's Play. This is the second episode. We've already met our heroine of the story, Samantha Everett, who looks pretty cool in her corset and biker jeans and purple hair and green things in it. And we've learnt that she is a stage magician. Her bike has crapped out completely. She has, she's posing as the assistant in, uh, for some person we haven't met yet. And we're now snooping around his house, as you do. So I thought we would start this episode in the parlour, because there are so many things to investigate, as you can see when I put on the marker. And remember, we are looking for a clue, some way to find out where on earth we are and how to get out of here, preferably with no money. So let us begin there are by looking no at the desk. Bus schedules lying around. Not even an address. Nothing on the desk. Mark of a Jane Jensen film. There's always a film. J Jane Jensen game. There's always a computer in the game. That computer is ancient. It might as well be an abacus. That looks like the old 386 I had. Look, it even has a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. Oh yeah, old school. Box of photos, what's in there? Looks like family photos. Nothing of use to me in there. Okay, a zippered pouch, Ooh, steal the money. I really use a bit of that, even 20 pounds. I'm stone broke, but it's the magician's creed. Never take cash or other valuables. I just can't. I never heard of such a magician's creed. If there's money lying around, take it. There's no, you are here on the globe, unfortunately. Have you seen those nice drinks cabinets that are shaped like a globe? And you lift up the globe and there's all the booze inside. Super. Ooh, photos of patients. Pictures of patients. Are these some of the doctor's patients? Interesting. Uh huh. Pictures of patients. Pictures of patients. That's it. Are these some of the doctor's patients? Mm. Yes, they look like pictures of his patients. And what can we look at now? Ashtray. Let's look at the ashtray. I don't smoke. <laughs> I don't smoke either, but you can look at the ashtray. Hello? Hello? Fire dogs. It doesn't look like anyone's used that fireplace in ages. Well, maybe the occasional cigar, you know, for a special occasion. Someone must read a lot. Someday, I'll have a library. Okay, someday she's going to have a library. Every manor should have a library. Diplomas. Dr. David Stiles, neurobiology. Hope he finds the assistant he's looking for. Uh-huh, neurobiology. Dr. David Stiles. Oh. Nice couple. They look happy. Annoyingly perfect, maybe, but happy. Picture of a couple. Anything else? No. Off we go. Next. Office door. Can we go through there? It's locked. Uh huh. It's locked. Anatomical statue. Lovely. Just what I want to see when I'm waiting in a doctor's office. Hey, if that's the waiting room of a doctor's office, it's pretty swanky. You know, this house is downright creepy. And I'm an ex-goth. I know creepy. <laughs> She's an ex-goth. Awesome. Well, we found absolutely bugger all in there, didn't we? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There was a... Sc <gasps> Uh-oh. Just going to see if he was awake. Oh, hi. You aren't sneaking out on us, are you? Me? Nah. -uh. 
Well, come and get your breakfast. I've got eggs, porridge, toast and ham. I'd be ashamed to let it go cold. Ooh, no shit. free food. I mean, <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Sam is eloquent. There we go. So we just... God, I'm starving. I guess if they aren't onto me by now, another half an hour won't hurt. So there you go. Sometimes it just pays to look at stuff and it starts the next sequence in the game. But remember what you looked at. Just Don't just click on things at random. It will all be relevant in the end. Amazing. I didn't know how you took your eggs, so I made them the way I like them. But I can do them however you like starting tomorrow. I'm not picky. One way is easy as another. People need a good breakfast, I always say. Oh my god, these are the best eggs I've ever tasted. <laughs> well now, himself does like them fresh. We've got a farmer drops them off every few days. Bit peckish, are you? What do they feed you over there at Oxford? Oxford? Um, the usual. And I never saw anyone in my life as cold, wet and tired as you last night. Oh, she's taken her under her wing. There's a bus stop just down the road, no more than 20 yards. Takes you right to Oxford Centre. Well, that's useful information, isn't it? <laughs> Still going on about them eggs, are you? No, I just can't believe my luck lately. Well, before you go off, himself left instructions for you on the door to the basement. I know, I tried reading them and you wouldn't let me! Oh, I mean Dr. Stiles, of course. He's working down in the lab this morning. He doesn't want to be disturbed. Now, I know you must have a question. In to the me. lab. Don't be shy about asking, Samantha. It's Sam, but funny. I don't remember telling you my name last night. There was a tag on your backpack when I washed your clothes. You really should update it to your Oxford address, dear. Wouldn't do having someone ship it back to the States if you lost it now, would it? <laughs> oh, and I'm Mrs. Dalton. I did tell you, but I suspect you were half asleep at the time. Aha! Now we have some conversation options. We can ask about other residents, London, Portrait in the Hall, the Centre for Cognitive Abnormality Research, Oxford, or Goodbye. Let's find out who else lives here. Who all lives here? Lord, it must seem a big old empty place to you. Sometimes I forget. It's only himself. And me. Just two people? In this huge old house? He can't abide company. Look, he can be difficult. I'll never say otherwise. But no matter what you've heard over there at that university, I don't believe it. All I ask is that you make up your own mind. If you can uh -huh. do that, do not be faint of heart. You'll be all Rumors right. are there. Mm-hmm. But whatever you do, don't mention the accident. Let's find out what happens in this I saw a plaque by the door. strange Center for cognitive psychopathic centre. I mean, what psychological mean, exactly? centre. The centre was Dr. Stiles' idea. He started it with his friend, Dr. Hillborn. How excited they were. It was busy too. Or starting to be. Then something happened and... Well, he closed it. But what does that mean? Cognitive abnormality. Didn't that school tell you anything? Dr. Stiles worked with patients who had strokes or brain injuries and the like. Always said those kinds of cases helped him understand the workings of the brain better than looking at a healthy one. He's retired now? Oh, you could say that. He hasn't seen patients in years. Okay, tell me something about London. London? London? An hour and a half, I'd say. Car or train will run you about the same. Of course, you'd never catch me driving in London. Oh, not for a million pounds. Nor me. That's Have Jenkins bad. drive you instead. Far enough away to be grateful, not so far as to be sorry. <laughs> Some local say. And how far are we yeah, from Oxford? Before I came to Oxford, I would have never imagined there was so much uninhabited countryside so nearby. Oh, there's plenty of country around here. And thank heavens for it. How long does the bus take to get into Oxford Centre? 30 minutes like. Makes a lot of stops on the way. Bye bye. What college are you in? Did the student employment office say it was St Edmund Hall? Or am I thinking of something else? Mm, it is St Edmund Hall. Nice college from what I've heard. Oh, it's a lovely college. Yes, love it there. 
Now, what about this assistant? So, what exactly does Dr. Styles' assistant do around here? I mean, as you see it. Never had one before. I'm sure they told you at the student employment office. It's mainly paperwork he wants done. Files sorted, computer work, things of that sort. You should have plenty of time to keep up with your studies. I told him there's no use sending over a medical student. He'd never let you no touch use. his actual work. I take it you're not in the sciences. Was it the tattoos that gave me away? No offence, dear. <laughs> what is it that you study? Um, English lit. Well, English literature. Right then, Everyone it? with tattoos yeah, studies ask, English literature. Will you be wanting the room, or will you be staying at the university? The room. The room you were in last night. It's yours whenever you want it. It's empty otherwise, isn't it? Empty. Awesome. Free Here's room. If you like, and meals. I'll leave your dinner in the fridge. Sure, a girl like you knows how to use a microwave. Yes, sure. Yes, I take the free room and the free food. Yes, yes, yes. Who is the in the portrait the in the hall? Beautiful girl. Is that Dr. Styles' daughter? If you want to get along in this house, that's the sort of thing you don't ask ever. Right. Oops. Sorry. Raw nerve. I know they told me this at university, but I'm not sure I remember it correctly. Besides the room and board, the physician pays... Well, I never. Catch a fever last night, did you? I'd have thought that would be the first thing on a student's mind. Yes. Sure. Yes, but tell me about the money. a whole list of available jobs, and I'm afraid I might be confusing them. Yes. Right. That's what I thought. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Let's work for £50. Free room and free food. No idea what year this is, but she doesn't have a mobile phone. So I'm guessing they're well stocked for just two 90s. People. I suppose there must have been a lot more living here once upon a time. Yep. Someone modernized an old fireplace. Cool idea. Cool. What's out the window? It looks a bit gloomy out there. Oh yeah, she said earlier it was going to rain, didn't she? What's on the notice board? Uh-huh. Let's do this. That There's a calendar. calendar oh, there you go. 2002. I was a bit bit early. It's a card for a psychologist. Now that's a phone number I'd have handy. You never know when you'll go stark raving mad. Do we have a phone? Hello? No, we have no phone. Do I need to write this number down? Excuse me whilst I write this number down. And that's who? Dr. Hellborn. Okay. Interesting. And Pazer card. Department. Gee, that's reassuring. Uh-huh. Another phone number. Reginald Pazer. Reginald Pazer of the Fuzz. 0870 one seven four two got it anything else on this notice board no 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 what did the calendar say that calendar is out of date oh the calendar's out of date it's later than 2002 I'm very much out um can we talk to her she seems nice enough but you never can tell you never can tell. Okay, we've eaten everything. I think it's time to skedaddle. Run, Samantha. Now, can we get this damn envelope? Nothing yes. Ventured, nothing gained. Yes. 50 pounds, free room, free food. Want a closer look? Zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. Move the item around by holding down the right mouse. Okay. To the new person. There is one thing for you to do today. Call it a rest, if you will. If you cannot accomplish it, pack your things and return to the campus by evening. Kurt. 
I planned to start an experiment, but despite putting up a few of these notices in town, no last lambs have telephoned. Find me six student volunteers for tonight. Leave your cell phone number with Mrs. Dalton. Dr. Stiles. Well, he's a charmer. Yes, he is. Don't get too comfortable, Houdini. What's this? Cash paid for experimental subjects for neurobiology experiment. Fifteen pounds an hour. Register with Dr. Stiles. This shouldn't be too hard. Students always need money. Students always right? need money. Absolutely right. Okay. So he said, leave a cell phone number. This implies that we have a cell phone. There's no one I can call. I don't know a soul here. And I can't call a repair shop because I don't have any money. All right, well, how about we leave and see if we can take a bus? Can we take a bus? Can we exit? Here, exit. Styles wanted me to leave my cell phone number. I should talk to Mrs. Dalton about that before I go. All right, have to give her a cell phone number. It's not a cell phone, it's a mobile phone. Okay. Hello, love. Oh, look, there's a, a mouth symbol now, which means that we, there is something that we can talk with her about, rather than just the eye. Hello. I have a problem. Dr. Stiles asked me to leave my cell phone number with you, but I don't have one. Oh, take mine. My sister's the only one who ever calls me on it, and she's on holiday. Are you sure? Thank you. I had one, but there was this incident with a brown squirrel. Ugly. They could be nasty blighters, can't they? Yes. Flipping squirrels. Quick, run away. We just got something. Another, yet something else for free. Let's have a look at the phone. Yay. Oh, nice. Look. It looks like a Nokia menu. Games. Snake. <laughs> Can we play Snake? Up. Across. <laughs> we can play snake. It doesn't look quite like snake, actually. <laughs> I used to play snake all the time on my phone. Oh my. Such are the bored, bored things that people do. Um, okay, now can we leave? I want to take a bus. We want, we're trying to get to Oxford, I think. Go, go, go! Yay! We now have access to Oxford! This map lets you visit the locations you know and gives some clues about your adventure. Open the map by pressing M, M for map, or clicking on the small compass icon to the left of your inventory. Continue. New locations have a white blinking outline. You can also tell something about a location by the colour of its label. Gold means the location contains one or more tasks required to end the chapter. However, it may not always be possible to complete these right away. Silver indicates a location with one or more bonus tasks, but no more required tasks. Dark grey means you've completed all tasks in this location for the current chapter. Okay. So we were at Dread Hill House. Oxford Town Centre is glowing, so there's something we can do there. Let's go to Oxford Town Centre. So this is Oxford. This is Oxford. Yes, beautiful city. I need to line up those students for the experiment. But while I'm here, I really want to snoop around. See if I can find any reference to the Daedalus Club here in Oxford. It's possible. Well, I think that is the perfect place to end this episode. Samantha has snooped her way around David Stiles' house. She has taken on the appointment of his assistant for the grandly sum of £50. I don't know if that's £50 a day, £50 a week or £50 a year. It wasn't quite specified. But she does get a free room and free food. She has been given an old crappy mobile phone, which um, I'm sure we'll make use of 
if only to play Snake. And now we've landed in Oxford by taking the bus. And we're going to explore Oxford in the next episode. So for now, I shall bid you a fond farewell and a tally-ho!